Hello and welcome to jQuery for Designers. My name is Remy Sharp and this episode we'll be covering the uh, CSS Overflow property and some of the funky things that you can do with it. So I'm going to show you two completely different things that we can do with it. The first one is um, timeline, scrollable timeline. So I was asked about how uh, Plurk has created their, their scrolling timeline. So you can see on their timeline all these different Plurkers and you can click and drag and go back and forth. And one really nice little uh, thing they've done is they've also included the, the mouse wheel event. So if you roll up and down on your mouse, it will scroll left and right. If I scroll a bit further down the page, um, the, the mouse scroll event is, is it acts as it should do. But when I'm over the, um, the plurks, it scrolls back and forth, which is great. And more recently, uh, Google had its 10 year anniversary, and they've got this massive great long list of... Um, uh, scrolling timeline of things that they've done over the last 10 years. So I've taken um, Google's source for the, the 10 year history and, and dropped it into this, this div so you can scroll back and forth. And I'm going to show you how to do, or st I'm going to start off by showing you how to do a scrolling timeline. So the markup for this is pretty straightforward. Um, there's one div around the edge which I've given a fixed height to and this is lots and lots of ULs. Um, so it's one, sorry, it's one UL uh, with lots of LIs and, and nested ULs, and as as Google have done it. But the the very first UL in here has a width of something like eleven thousand pixels. And we have the overflow set to auto on our outer div, and we're going to hook into a click event on this outer div. And, and make it scroll back and forth. So if I quickly show you the markup here, so we've got div timeline, which is the outer div, and it has our uh, scroll, scroll auto, uh, overflow auto, so we've got scroll bars. Eventually we're going to make that hidden, so we've got no scroll bar, um, and we'll be navigating using the, uh, the mouse to drag. And within this, you can see the UL, which has a super wide height, and all of these LIs which have float, uh, floated left and have a fixed width, so they all cascade against each other. Um, right, so, yeah, so here's the CSS. Uh, I've also got this um, cursor moz grab. Now it's only going to work in uh, Mozilla, and I've done a few other things, uh, like the, the mod. Uh, border radius and so on. Um, I would probably argue that the cursor should be changed to mozgrab using JavaScript because when you're on this page and there's no JavaScript, this the, the cursor being a grab is, is slightly unintuitive. It looks like you can actually drag it when you can't. So I am going to comment this out and I'm going to add it in using JavaScript later. So let's pull in jQuery. And when the document is ready, I need to attach a uh, mouse down event and a few mouse events to the the timeline element. So I'm going to just set up these placeholders. Mouse down, event. And mouse move. Oops. Right, let me explain how we're going to get this to work. It's a really simple bit of maths, but you need to just capture a few variables to make sure that uh, the, the, the scroll works properly. So the first thing we need to capture is when the mouse is moving, or the whole effect happens when the mouse moves, but when the mouse is up, we don't want to do the effect. So the first thing to capture is the mouse is down. And we cancel that, cap that, that state when the mouse goes up. The second thing is the, the X coordinate. So we're going to move this scroll bar using the DOM element. So let me show you that manually. So selecting the div timeline, in the DOM attributes, we've got this scroll left change it to a thousand, 
you can see this moves along. That's the property we're going to be changing. So when I click down here and drag to the right, I need to look at the distance. I need to capture the initial uh, x coordinate from where I drag, uh, from where I clicked, and when I go to the right, I need to work out this distance and add it onto this current scroll position. Now, because of that, I also need to capture the scroll position. So if I'm over here, I need to capture the fact I'm here when I mouse down, then add on the distance that I scroll, uh, move my mouse to the right to the scroll position. So I'm going to show you that in the code and show you what I'm going to be capturing. The first way I could capture this oh, our tabs are out. Let's sort that out quickly. So the first way I could capture this is down equals false. Oh, excuse me. Right, down equals true, down equals false, and if down, we're moving. We are moving. So I'll quickly show you that working, but that's not how we're going to do it. Yeah, so if I move back and forth, nothing's happening. Click down, back and forth. We get the console log. The reason why I'm not going to capture it as a variable here is because eventually I might want to reuse this whole block of code that I create to, to be a plugin. So you know maybe in the future it'll be div.timeline and I might have 10 of them on there. If I use a single variable it means that if I click down on one timeline and move my mouse on a different one it'll think we're moving. So I actually need to I need to bind um, this data to this specific pr this specific element that I clicked on. I'm going to use the the data function. So this dot data down equals true. Now this has now created a property um, that jQuery manages uh, called down and set the value to true. This is a cleaner way of uh, of storing data against an element. And here, if I want to test for it, I do data down equals true. Let's get rid of this variable. So you can see it still works. And this is what we're going to use to capture the um, the current scroll position um, and the uh, the X position, the, the, the initial mouse down position. And I'm going to chain these dot data functions. So we're going to capture dot down, we're going to capture dot uh, the, the X, so it's event dot client X, and dot data scroll X. I want to capture the current position of, of this scroll bar. And that's this dot scroll left. So these are the three properties I need to make sure that when I drag back and forth, I have enough information to make the the effect work. So if the mouse is down on a particular element, I'm going to set this dot scroll left to a new value, and that value is this dot data dot scroll left so the original sorry not scroll left scroll x if I should call it scroll left so it makes more sense yep whoops plus this dot data dot x and minus event dot client x and let's give that a test no. Syntax error. Ah, comma. Didn't want that. Right. Click. Drag. Okay, so you notice a problem here. I'm going to get onto that in a second. 
So I'm clicking and I can drag back and forth. It gets to the edge, so you can see I'm hitting the, the left hand side and it doesn't let me scroll any further. It doesn't throw an error either when I do it. Now it's quite a slow drag. We can accelerate that by subtracting a value from this client X. So I'm going to just, you know, minus an arbitrary value, minus 30. Scrolls just a touch faster. Now you can, in the big, the the bigger the value that subtract, the faster it will scroll. So 300. Uh, actually, that's not true. That's completely wrong. Sorry, I'm talking rubbish. Um, how do I make this scroll faster? I'm just going to try and add 30, and if I can't get this to work, I'm going to let you guys work that out. Yeah, that doesn't scroll faster. Right, one for you guys, okay? <laughs> um, right, let's not scroll faster. Okay, that's that's basically all you need to actually get the uh, the scroll left and right to work. Um, now I also want to scroll with the mouse up and down when I when I roll my mouse wheel. So I'm going to include um, the mouse wheel plugin, which if you just search for jQuery mouse wheel, you get plugins, and this is the mouse wheel extension that I want. Now I've already downloaded it, so screw it. Source jQuery dot mouse wheel dot js. I'm just checking I've pulled that in correctly. Yep. And I'm just going to chain it onto the end of this one. I believe it's mouse wheel. I get two values being passed in here, um, the event and the delta, so the amount that it changed. And all I'm going to do is this dot scroll left, minus equals delta, and that's super slow. But I'm scrolling my mouse, obviously you can't see it, um, but I'm scrolling up and down and it's scrolling my div left and right. So let's try and speed this one up. There you go. So I've just um I've just factored the delta by you know, 30, just an arbitrary value in it, just speeds along faster. Now that's scrolling left and right and scrolling up and down. So I'm scrolling up now, I'm scrolling down, and I've got my scrollable timeline. Now all I want to do is get rid of this scroll bar and put my drag cursor. So I just do CSS, pass it the object, uh, overflow, hidden, and Mars cursor. Is it Mars cursor? Nope, cursor. And there you go. There's our scrolling timeline. Uh, so, fun with overflow part one. I should just add quickly as well, um, because we're using, um, oh no, hang on, sorry, I've got bugs in this, I'm not finished. When I scroll left and right, There is a bug, I'm sure. Didn't I have something where... Oh, yeah, here we go. Right, so, my mouse isn't currently down at the moment. Um, and it's because... When I... If I just scroll over to this... So, I'm over in this corner. I click down, I go left and right. I've come out... No. Where is it? Ah, uh, yes, right, okay, sorry. When I scroll left and right and I come out of the window, put my mouse up and then carry on going left and right, 
it's still got the mouse down. Does that make sense? Um, now I need to do something special to to handle me dragging out of the window. I'm going to attach um, uh, an event to the window object to say if I if I scroll out of the window and the mouse is down then clear the mouse down property okay so mouse out and if and this is a bit it's a bit tricky um, what I, uh, let me show you what happens. So if I mouse out, I do a console log event. Oh, yeah. If the mouse is down. So you see we've got this event here. And what I want to is if the mouse went out of the uh the body tag. Uh there's this original yeah, here we go. So I think it's original target. So look at this first one. Should be original target. I think what I'm looking for is um, if the mouse went out of the, the the body element or the HTML element, then cancel the mouse down. So if event dot original target dot node name equals body or event dot Let's give this a try. Yeah, do you see? So it's when I came right out to this corner. That's where I want to cancel it. So I'm going to do timeline dot data down equals false. So when I come out here, I'm going back and forth, my mouse goes up here and back down. My mouse doesn't come up yet. It's cancelled the event. Now, I, I have tried this in a few different browsers and it doesn't always work. So what I've done is just literally wrap this in a try catch. Um, I think it's because sometimes the mount, uh, someone can correct me on this, but I think sometimes um, it doesn't have access to this this original target, um, so it completely fails. So we're just going to catch E and just throw it entirely away. Um, that's a scrolling timeline. Oh, there's one other thing that we can do. If uh, if you notice when I if I click and drag down, it selects a bunch of text. We can prevent this by just returning false on the mouse down. This cancels the mouse down event, and it means that when I drag, it doesn't select the text, and it means that I can't drag these uh, these links away. So if I if I just comment this out and show you, I could actually drag these links around, which looks a bit daft when you're trying to scroll back and forth and just suddenly kind of you know drags it off or it selects text. So return false, and I can't move those. Uh, I can't drag those links around, and I can't select text. Now I've recorded the, uh, the second part of the screencast separately um, and it shows you a completely different effect using 
uh, overflows um, and and a bit of JavaScript. And it's quite cool and funky. But um, yeah, check that out as well. It's on jQuery doc, uh, jQueryforDesigners.com. Uh, if you've got any comments or any suggestions on how to make the scroll left, right go faster, drop a comment on the uh, the website. Otherwise, thanks for watching.